Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Eris Gold. Eris operates the Marmado Mine in Colombia, where a major expansion program is underway. It also holds a 20% interest in the Soto Norte project in Colombia, where it has an option to acquire a, a further 30%. As it also holds the Juby project, which is an advanced stage gold project in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt of Ontario. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Tyron Breidenbach, who's the Senior Vice President of Capital Markets, as well as Megan Brown, Vice President of Investor Relations at Eris. The format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the beginning, Tyron and Meg will provide an overview of Eris Gold, including its recently announced business combination with GCM Mining, which supports its strategy of building the next globally relevant gold producer. In the second part of the webinar, we'll take your questions live. So please submit them uh, into the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. I'll note that you can enter your questions at any point. To start, we'll handle the disclosures, then I'll turn it over to Tyron. So for Eris Gold, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on the page two of Eris Gold's corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Eris Gold specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Tyron and Meg to update you on Eris Gold and what you have to look forward to with the company. Thanks a lot, Taylor. Welcome everyone and thanks for making time for this call. Um, so I'm Eris Gold's newest employee. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a geologist by background and have spent the last two decades or so in capital markets. Uh, I've had a couple of opportunities to switch to the issuer side, um, but I think this opportunity was unique. I, I really uh, am interested in this, this idea that there's a real void in the mid-tier producer space and, and the group of professionals that I've joined, uh, I think is perfectly positioned to kind of fill that void. Uh, I think for most of you, Meg Brown would be a familiar face. Uh, this is her second or third go around with Neil Woodyear and his team. Um, uh, so uh, 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 that's that's it for introductions here. And and we're lucky in that Red Cloud actually covers both GCM mining and Eris Gold from a research perspective. So instead of coming at this from an Eris point of view, I thought we'd just talk about the logic of the transaction and why we have decided to put these two companies together. So firstly, positions the new company uh, as a larger, more relevant company. And when I say larger, I mean better trading liquidity, in enhanced market visibility, better access to capital, and we think with a peer leading growth profile. It also simplifies the ownership and enhances the financial capacity. So there's a bit of history here, which some of you might be familiar with. Ares Gold was originally spun out of GCM after GCM discovered the Marmado lower zone. It was spun out uh, to be funded in a separate vehicle. We accomplished that. We built a new management team around that asset. But as the markets got worse, the logic became compelling to put these two companies back together and, and pair up our balance sheets. So at closing, we will have cash and committed funding of 657 million that totally funds our near-term production profile. We're gonna be getting good cash flow from the Segovia operations, which last year free cash flowed over 80 million US. And then of course, there are some corporate synergies as well. We expect to save at least uh, 10 million bucks a year in, in corporate G&A. And then I think what's unique about this pairing is, is the, the balanced nature of our asset base. So we've got four core assets and each one on its own in a standalone capacity has the potential to do 200,000 ounces a year. That's very rare in this market. And I think it's gonna allow us to get to seven or even 800,000 ounces from four assets versus some of our peers who have to deal with the complexity of running seven or eight mines to, to deliver a similar, similar growth profile. And then the, the final rationale for the deal here is it strengthens our team. So the two groups were well known to, get, were, were well known to each other. Um, it, 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 it pairs uh, proven mine builders, company builders with I think a best in class um, uh, Colombian team uh, that, that, has, that, that has proven to be a leader uh, in, in, in terms of sustainability, in terms of integrating small small miners. So this slide is 
a snapshot of what uh, new Eris is going to look like post-merger. So one thing we're very proud of is our reserve and resource base. So we'll have close to 4 million ounces in reserves. If you look at our resources in all categories, we'll have over 25 million ounces. So we don't, we don't need to take expiration risk to grow. We're going to be the largest gold company in Colombia, the third largest mining company in Colombia. And we will now have a big, a big toehold in, in Guyana, which allows us to diversify our, our geographical risk a little bit. We also have a presence in the Abitibi through the Juby deposit. That's a, that's a decent little 2.2 million ounce deposit. It's not a focus for us, but, um, you know, it never hurts to have, to have a holding in, in a place like the Abitibi. That's, that's never going to go out of fashion. So when we put Eris together, uh, we were looking for, for a producer. Uh, so we have a lot of high quality growth ounces. We needed to fund that growth and we needed to increase our scale of production to become more relevant. So when we pair up with GCM Mining, we get exactly that with Segovia. So for those of you who don't know the Segovia asset, it is the highest grade deposit in Latin America. Uh, this mine has been around for over a century. It's been remarkably consistent. For the last five years, the, the cash operating margin has been very, very stable. It's generated a lot of free cash flow. And while on paper, it has a short reserve life, that's just a function of the style of the deposit and, and, and the discrete vein hosted uh, 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 nature of the mineralization. If you look at the chart on the right, uh, you can see that the company, uh, or rather GCM Mining, um, our, our new partners, have, have replaced and increased resources over the last six years. So when we did our due diligence, Eris came to the conclusion that this is going to be a mine that produces 200,000 ounces a year for the foreseeable future and is going to be the, the ATM machine that allows us to continue to grow. Conversely, GCM Mining benefits from Eris's interest in Soda Norte. So Soda Norte is a tier one asset by any definition of the word. Um, I like this slide because it benchmarks all of the large undeveloped deposits in the space. And as you can see, Soda Norte is the fifth largest. We have 12 million ounces in all categories, but it's the highest grade. So that 6.2 grams of gold is accompanied by an ounce of silver and 0.2% copper. So some really good byproduct credits. And when you're, when you're mining at 7,000 tons a day at those grades, you're always going to have very, very low costs. So we're, we're looking at a, at a 2021 feasibility study level, all in sustaining costs of sub $500 an ounce. So that's a fresh number that includes some of the, some of the CapEx inflation we're seeing in the sector. And, and, and we believe that this is going to be the lowest cost uh, asset in the space. Um, uh, we've got a strong JV partner in the form of Mubadla. They have a balance sheet that's well over hundred billion in terms of AUM. Uh, and we are currently the, the operator and I think is going to allow this, this, this company to become a, a very se serious miner. The other thing we like to point out at Soda Norte is that it's a district. So the upper image is a long section of our block model. There are 12 million ounces in that little nugget. It's completely open down dip and down plunge. And there are three or four known epithermal zones outside of the resource model, but those have not been drilled off. The focus of our partners for the last 10 years has been engineering, permitting and development. Uh, so once we have that permit and we're in production and we can actually start to get the exploration rigs going, I personally believe this is a 20 million ounce district and, and it's going to be of interest to, to a senior mining company because as Ian Telfer says, these are the toughest assets to get your hands on and, and, and we already have one. The lower image is a, another benchmarking slide. So this is annual production versus all in sustaining costs. So at 450,000 ounces a year plus, Soda Norte could easily fit inside a portfolio of a Barrick, a Newmont, or a Newcrest. And it's got very, very low all in sustaining costs. So it would bring down the company average for, for, for any acquirer. So once this asset is permitted, I think it's going to get a heck of a lot of attention. One of the reasons we're so confident that we'll be able to permit it is the design. So we've gone for a very environmentally friendly, uh, sustainability focused design. Uh, it's all underground mining. Uh, not only are we mining underground, but we are, we are accessing the underground workings from many kilometers away from, from the ore zone. So we can come in from a more benign environmental setting. We're going to put the crusher underground. And for those of you who've been to a mine site, the crusher is the, the largest single piece of infrastructure in a, in a, in a processing plant. So all of the, the dust and the noise associated with, with the crusher, that's going to be underground. We're going to produce a concentrate, a clean concentrate. Uh, we will not be using cyanide or mercury. 
the only reagent we're using is water and we're not going to draw water from the uh, natural water table. We're going to recycle mine water. And, and at the end of the day, we're going to put our tailings into a dry stack tailing system. So there's, there's uh, a less, less or, or, or zero chance of, of, of tailings failure. So when you think about a benign, low impact, small footprint design, um, this is about as good as it gets. Now, this is going to cost us more. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to drive a slightly higher capex. But when you have a really high grade, long life deposit, it can handle that, that, that capex. And so this is the framework that's going to underpin our new permit when we submit that application early next year. And not to forget about the rest of our portfolio, uh, we need to touch on Marmado quickly. So Marmado was the was the biggest producer inside, the, the biggest and only producer inside Eris before the merger was announced. We are currently mining in the upper mine. This is a set of epithermal veins. So our efforts here have been focused on grade control, proper geological modeling and safety. And we're already starting to see improvements. Um, so we've taken last year's production up from 27,000 ounces to a guidance of 40 to 45,000 ounces this year. But as we advance permitting, we can get into the lower zone. And the lower zone is, is a new discovery. It's a big 8 million ounce porphyry. That's gonna allow us to switch to bulk tonnage, mechanized long hole stoping. We're gonna move a lot more rock and that's what turns Marmato into a 200,000 ounce a year producer. Uh, and we can do that from our current balance sheet. So this is a, this is a near term growth project that, that, that is fully funded once we, once we meet our, our, our permitting milestones. Another important growth asset for us is Toro Peru. Uh, so this is our, our new asset in Guyana. It was brought to the table by GCM. Uh, again, like all of our assets, you're looking at a multi-decade mine life. So there are 10 million ounces in total. And a recent PA published by GCM showed a production profile of over 200,000 ounces, uh, but a project that can do that for well over, over two decades. So we really like Guyana. We think the geology is as uh, attractive as many other greenstone belts across the planet, but has seen a fraction of, of, of the exploration interest. Um, so it could be a very interesting growth geography for us. Um, Guyana previously has been hampered a little bit by access to infrastructure. We think now that is gonna to start to change with the big oil discovery offshore and with companies like Zijin moving into the country. I mean, right now Zijin has 800 employees at site at, at the Aurora project, which they acquired from, from Guyana. So we think now is the right time to kind of, kind of enter this, this, this uh, new, new geography. Another benefit of putting the two companies together is the balance sheet. Um, so on a consolidated basis, we will, we will have over 400 million US in cash when we close. And we have another 260 million coming in from our streaming agreements with uh, Weed and Precious. Uh, those streaming agreements are tied to both Marmato and, and Toro Peru. So our, our short to near term growth, in our opinion, is fully funded. Um, GCM is gonna essentially cancel the shares that they own in Eris. And so they're only issuing 38 million new shares. And when we close, we'll still have a very tight share structure of 136 million. And I think with the market cap of sub 400 US, you're getting a lot of gold and a lot of growth uh, for, that, for that market cap. And then of course, Segovia has had substantial free cash flow and that's gonna buffer our, our, our balance sheet as well. Looking at our combined resource tables on a measured and indicated basis, we're touching 19 million ounces. That puts us right next to Iron Gold, which has more than double our, our enterprise value. So we have a lot of growth ahead of us and, and we, can, we can continue to pursue that growth without taking exploration risk. So looking at the peer group, uh, this shows where Eris will slot in once this transaction closes. So on a consolidated basis, our 2022 production guidance is 260,000 ounces. So we're already a formidable producer. But I think what's really exciting is our short-term growth. So over the next three years, we have a CAGR of around 35%, which is best in class. And our costs are right now in the middle of the pack. But as we mechanize at Marmato, and bring on Soto Norte, which again is a very high grade, low cost asset, we should start to see our oil and sustaining costs decline. So we have one of the best growth profiles, but we do that without an associated increase in, in costs. And I think that's, that's really what sets the profile of this company apart. And then I think we're the value play in the space. Uh, we're very under-owned. Uh, we have um, possibly two institutional owners in, in, in Eris. GCM has slightly higher institutional ownership, but we are completely under the radar. Uh, there are two analysts covering each company. 
I look at someone like Eldorado, which is one notch above us on the comp sheet. They probably have 10 analysts following that company. So right now we're at 0.2 times NAV uh, on a PNAV basis. On an EV per ounce basis, we're even more attractive at $13 an ounce. So amongst the peers, we offer, I think, the best leverage to, to the gold price. Um, and I think that by becoming larger, more relevant, going into these passive ETFs, we'll get a better multiple and the stock can go up without a, with, without relying on the gold price. So I, I think it's a very asymmetric opportunity. As we grow and de-risk the opportunity, our multiple should, should improve. And then just a, a quick reminder on transaction uh, structure and timing. So GCM is acquiring Eris. We are then changing the, the name from GCM to Eris Mining. Um, the ratio for share exchange is uh, 0 0.5 to 1. Uh, I'll point out that on the day of announcement, both stocks were up double digit. That was on a day when Newmont was down 13%. And if we think about some of the other, the other mergers in the space, they were greeted with big down moves on the day of announcement. So I, I think the market understands what we're trying to do. And we've been running around telling the story, getting a pretty good reception. Um, so this is subject to a vote. Uh, shareholders on both sides are going to have an opportunity to vote. We're setting our shareholder meetings for mid-September. And if everything goes well, we're hoping to close in, in September and launch uh, uh, a, new, a new mining company. And then finally, I'm going to bring it back to the management team, um, which I think really underpins the strategy of what Eris is trying to accomplish. We want to grow through the buy and build um, methodology. We want to portfolio manage. We want to climb the property ladder. We don't want to take drill bit risk. And we want to use our above average access to capital and our above average access to assets to, to, to grow, get a better multiple and become more relevant to institutional investors. Our board and management team has done this with Wheaton, Yamana, Endeavor and Leogold. It's a proven strategy. They're an entrepreneurial group of guys and, and uh, they have already taken single asset companies and grown it into a multi-asset billion dollar producer I think we're at the early days here at Aris, and I think this merger with GCM is step one to getting us to our stated goal of becoming uh, a million ounce a year producer. So that's it in a nutshell. We try to keep it brief and be cognizant of everyone's time. And obviously, Taylor's got some fantastic research out there. So maybe at this point, I'll hand it back to Red Cloud and, and we can get into some questions if there are any. Perfect. Uh, thanks a lot, Tyron. Um, so now we'll turn to the Q&A session of the webinar and just a reminder to everybody on the line that you can type in your questions at any point. Um, so to get things going, um, you know, you mentioned a bit about the, you know, team and the Columbia focus and experience there. Um, could you maybe just speak a little bit about uh, in-country itself, um, you know, who's kind of spearheading everything and particularly at Marmato? Um, with the uh, lower mine development there. Sure. Um, so uh, Richard Thomas is our SVP operations. Uh, he's been with the, the group for, for multiple decades, uh, spent a lot of time in Africa with, with Endeavor. Um, he is basically uh, full-time in, in Bogota. Uh, Neil Woodyard goes to site for uh, about a week a month. Um, and one of the first things Neil did when we announced the transaction, he was actually in Colombia on the day we announced the transaction because he's building a new org chart and we're going to, we're going to leverage the expertise that we're getting from our partners at GCM. I mean, if you look at what they've been able to accomplish at Segovia, 16% uh, of their production coming from artisanal miners, it's going to be very important to kind of take that expertise, uh, dial it into Marmado and just kind of clean up the situation at, uh, uh, Marmado. So, um, uh, I know we're doubling down in Colombia, but we're 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 doubling down uh, at the best, largest gold mine in the country, and we're going to take that expertise and that and that template and kind of spread it over our other assets, and and that that should help with with permitting Soda Norte uh, as well. Okay, um, and and sticking with Marmato there with the the lower mine development, um, what does the uh, kind of timeline look like there to to get that on? Uh, get that completed and as well as kind of the, the capex that's outlined for that and are, are you seeing inflation uh, that's going to be uh, factoring into that yeah so if you look at our last study um it's not super old it was published in 2020 uh we had a capex number of 279 us we started to spend some of that uh, we've put down some deposits for some long lead items uh, as an underground mine 
Uh, I think that mitigates the capex risk somewhat as far as inflation goes. Uh, the fuel price is also somewhat controlled in, in Colombia. That buffers us a little bit as well. And then I'm told by the guys at site that up to 50% of our capital costs are actually going to be incurred in the local currency, um, which is not done well uh, versus the US dollar. So that's that, that's going to mitigate inflation as well. Uh, one of the things we're probably going to do is switch to contract money. But uh, I, think, I think those are three tangible factors that will somewhat mitigate that, that capital risk. In terms of timing, uh, the big outstanding item is the amendment to our PMA. So PMA is sort of a, a plan of operations. We're grandfathered under a, a prior mining law. Our regulator is uh, the provincial uh, authority, uh, Corpus Calder, so we don't have to go to the federal government. And we're looking for an amendment rather than a new permit. So the, the guidance on processing time for that permit amendment is six months. Um, we're well into that process. They've provided comments. We're responding to the comments. And our current guidance, Current guidance to the market is that we're hoping to have that amendment um, by October this year, and then we can really start to kind of move a lot of rock and bring equipment to site. Um, so that's 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 going to kick off uh, uh, the bulk of the capex spend. Okay, and um, you mentioned uh, mechanized mining uh, for for the lower zone. Uh, is that the main uh, contributor to the the the, the lower uh, cost operation there? Yeah, so I believe the current mill is rated for 1,250 tons a day. They're not filling it at 1,250 tons a day. So there's a lot of inherent inefficiencies. We're building a new 4,000 ton per day plant. So when you go from 900 tons a day to 5,500 tons a day, huge economies of scale. Um, so these, these are going to be big stopes. And, and when you're talking about 30, 40 meter wide stopes at, at 2.5, 2.8 grams, that's, that's pretty good grade for that sort of um, material movement. Um, we are increasing the grade at the upper mine as well. Uh, if you look at our last quarter, which we reported yesterday, I think we've gone from 2.8 to 3.2 grams. So just increasing the grade and, and focusing on understanding, understanding the geology and minimizing dilution, that, that's already started to Im 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 improve our cost, but really it's a, it's a scale increase. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so let's uh, turn to Soto Norte now and, you know, maybe just kind of outline, you know, what the key uh, milestones are in the, in the near future for that project. Um, you know, I know the environmental permit is the kind of the main thing on the, the horizon there. Um, and, and maybe just for, for viewers, just uh, provide some context on, on the history uh, with that, uh, with the previous operator and how you're able to kind of, how you think you're, you know, going to, be in a better position to, to drive that project forward now that you're there. Absolutely. And I mean, with Soto Norte, I'll point out that since we did the deal, our stock's gone sideways. So I think you're currently getting that as a free option when you buy uh, Aero stock. Um, I'm going to go a little bit further back into the history of invested $2 billion into Ike's company. Um, and when when Ike uh, ran into, into financial difficulties for well-publicized reasons, uh, basically, the asset landed in the hands of, of Mubadla. And Mubadla are, are very sophisticated uh, financial types. Um, they're not based in Colombia. You know, they're, they're sitting in, in Abu Dhabi. And I think they did a lot through consultants. Um, they're, they're not mining experts, right? Um, so for sure, they built some mining talent around them. But they're not Neil Woodyer and Ian Telfer who have built three or four mining companies. Um, they, they don't have a producing mine in Colombia. We do. So I think our on-the-ground presence, which has now been massively boosted by merging with, with GCM, uh, 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 that's going to allow for a much more honest and constructive dialogue with the regulators. So what we're doing right now is re-looking at the mine plan. Is, is there anything we, we, we can do differently? As, as I mentioned, you know, the crash is going underground. We're getting dry stack tailings. We're going to look at alternative tailings locations. We're going to look at maybe putting the, the tailings back underground to reduce the footprint even further. Uh, and we're engaging the regulators the entire time that we're putting this permit application together. So when we file the, the new permit application in Q1 of next year, hopefully we'll have answered all their questions and it'll just get processed without any surprises. Uh, the guidance we've given to the market is that it's a two-year process from, from filing the application. Um, another data point is that Continental Gold which had a very similar sized operation, but that used cyanide, uh, their application was processed in 10 months. So I think the bookends are you know, 10 months to, to, to two years, but we're determined to do this right. Something else I'll point out is that we currently own 20%, but we have a right to own 50, up to 50%. But as of today, we are the operator. Neil Woodyear is the CEO of Manessa. 
uh, we we are the face of all of the dialogue and 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 all of the decisions in country and and as part of this transaction, uh, you know, Neil agreed to go to site on a regular basis and and meet with the uh, with the government and we've already started to make uh, contacts and inroads into the into the new administration. Um, and then uh, Serafino Iwakino has agreed to stay on our board post transaction. Um, and his contacts and, and, and legacy in, in, in Colombia, I think, is going to be critical to kind of moving this, this process along as well. Which it has been heavily focused on uh, bringing into production. Um, I guess, how do you see everything kind of fitting together? Going forward? Yeah, we're, we're still um, figuring this out for ourselves, right? I mean, obviously, Segovia is in production right now. Uh, they just finished one of the largest ever drill programs. We, we want to keep that going for sure. Marmato, we're already on the ground. We're, we're, we're mining, so it seems logical that we're going to focus on expanding Marmato. What's interesting about Torre Peru is it's essentially permitted. I can't think of many 10 million ounce deposits that have a permit in hand. Um, so they're both near term opportunities. Which one's going to, going to come first? I think we need to look at what comes out of the feasibility study. So that, that's an interesting point is that, is that by the fall of this year, we'll have a new pre fees for, for both assets and a new, a new capital number. And I think that's going to drive uh, which one comes first. Um, we could build them both at the same time. We've got the capital. Uh, the only asset that that cannot be funded from our current balance sheet is Soda Norte. But Soda Norte, we're not looking for a permitting decision for two and a half years. Okay, and when that's a, when that asset is permitted, uh, I think it's the kind of asset that funding isn't 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 going to be the challenge. We're going to produce a lot of silver, a lot of copper, so we have the opportunity to sign an off-take agreement. Our JV partner is one of the biggest balance sheets in the space and fantastic relationships with lenders. I've been on a few calls with some lenders out of Asia that have offered to, to finance like half the CapEx. Um, and so we would conceivably be responsible for only half of an equity number of 200 million. So I think, I think it's a very financeable project. We're not worried about getting it financed, um, but we're just so focused on, on, on the permit right now and the growth that's in front of us at, at Torre Peru and, and more modern. Okay. Perfect. Um, so we'll, we'll switch off of the, the assets now and we'll uh, go to a, another question that came in here. Uh, just wondering uh, if you could comment on the political environment with Colombia. We know the uh, president just uh, this sworn in, uh, I believe on Sunday, and the, the new mining ministers, uh, it's either today or I think it's today where she's sworn in. So maybe just comment on that. Yeah, so our, our CEO has, has already had meetings with the, uh, with, with the mines minister. Um, so we've made that that connection. Um, uh, I'm very pleased as an Aris Gold shareholder that we've decided to merge with GCM. I think what's going on at Segovia is a fantastic example of a of a modern Western mining company working hand in hand with a bunch of small scale miners. Um, so a lot of the, the 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 you know politicians are at their most uh, rambunctious during the campaigning phase, right? But 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 as a new administration, uh, there's going to be some bargaining. To kind of get legislation passed, and it's a pretty it's a pretty fractured political system, and and alliances are needed to kind of to kind of get bills through. Um, so I believe that logic will prevail. And if you're a good operator, which GCM Mining is, if you have good high grade assets that'll be around for decades, um, I continue to believe that logic will prevail. Would a would a low grade high strip open pit that used cyanide and had a uh, a wet tailings facility get permitted? No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I also don't think anyone should be rushing into Colombia. Uh, the geology in Colombia is fantastic, but you need the right team um, to kind of be successful in Colombia. We think that's that's an advantage for us. So, you know, we need to meet with the politicians, understand what their goals are, um, but we believe we offer a compelling environmental economic um, calculus for, for the new administration. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so we have a question. Uh, just wondering about um, if you're doing any drilling now, um, and if there's any activity on that front. Yeah, I mean, so as a uh, former exploration geologist, it's one of the first things I dug into when I joined the company. Uh, I had a long chat with uh, Pam, our, our 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 VPX, and she kind of laughed at me, right? Because we got nine million ounces, t touching nine million ounces at, at, at Marmato. We got 12 million ounces at Soda Norte. There's, there's over 10 at, at Tor Peru. So there's decades of runway ahead of us. I think, I think at Segovia, you're going to see us continue to keep the pressure on with the expiration. Uh, as an institutional story, I think it's important to show a bit of my life. I mean, this asset has a wonderful track record of reserve and resource replacement. I think we'd, we'd like to, we'd like to grow that a little bit. 
Um, and then at Juby, um, uh, what's interesting about Juby is, is in addition to the 2.2 million ounce open pit resource, it's sitting on a, a district um, and the porcupine death default is going right through our property. And what we'd like to do is a structural study. This is pretty inexpensive. Maybe fly some new geophysics, try and find some new targets. And if we could increase the value of that project by by drilling, you know, 20 or 30 holes, that that's something we might we might look to do. But um, uh, I listened to Ian Telfer speak and, you know, he doesn't believe that betting on on a risky drill hole is the way to build uh, a company. And I think at some point, like when we're permitted in production at Soda Norte, you know, if you're not suggesting other people just to, to run into the country if they, they don't know what they're doing, they don't have that experience, I guess. Um, you know, how, how are you or I guess what do you what would you say to investors that, you know, they they don't understand Colombia, they don't, uh, you know, they, they don't have a positive view on that. Like, how are you, what is the strategy, I guess, going forward that Eris is going to employ to really change that perception in the marketplace? Well, I would really encourage them to come to site with us in the fall. We're, we're planning on hosting a site tour to Segovia. Uh, everyone who's been, you know, comes back sh struck by how clean, organized, uh, and integrated it is with the community. Like, like every single person I've spoken to who's, 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 who's come back from site. Uh, you know, our board has three Colombians, uh, including a former minister of mines. Um, uh, 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 our CEO spends a lot of his time in country. So I would say, I would say schedule a call with us. Um, I'm sitting in Toronto right now, uh, uh, and, and, and that question would be much better answered by our very capable and very broad team uh, down in Columbia who give us updates, but it's not going to be the same as, as kind of talking to someone live. Okay. Um, so I think we're, we're getting down on questions here. So maybe I'll just, um, you know, maybe if you could just sum up and, and outline the key catalysts or give, you know, the final pitch to, 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 to our audience, that'd be great. Okay, well, once again, thanks everyone uh, for your time. Um, I would encourage you to look at any cell side research comp sheet and the mid-tier producer group has been hollowed out uh, uh, with the acquisition of things like Detour and Kirkland Lake. I think investors want growth the seniors are struggling to grow. It's very difficult to, to replace formal announces when you're chewing through formal announces a year. Uh, we have growth, that growth is funded. We have a, we have a proven team. And I, and, I, and I truly believe that when these two companies merge and we get a chance to actually market the story um, uh, and, and, and get, get added to all of these various indices, it, that's, that's gonna kick off the, the, the momentum that's been missing uh, from these two companies for for, for quite a while now. In terms of other catalysts, I think a, um, a, a an amended permit at Marmado that allows us to increase, dramatically increase the scope of that asset shows we can be successful in Colombia. It's gonna be a show me from our Marmado title by 30 years. If we can do the same at Soto Norte, um, which I think we'll be able to do this year, that again, is just another data point showing we can be successful in country, that we have a social license and that we are able to, to operate in uh, Colombia. And then finally, you know, Meg and I are available anytime. Happy to answer your questions, drill into the assets, the balance sheet, and kind of connect you to uh, some of our team that, that can maybe answer some of your questions more, more eloquently. Perfect. Okay. Um, we do have a question here. Uh, just wondering about the copies of the presentations. I believe they're available both on ARIS's website and GCM's uh, website as well. Indeed, Taylor, thanks. And I've received a couple of messages while we've been on this webinar. Um, the, the deal presentation is on our website. There's a, a, a button you can click on the homepage to read all about the deal. And then our regular investor deck is also on our website. You can both can be downloaded um, in PDF form from our website. And then I, I'll just point out um, that the circular should be filed in the next couple of weeks for, for this transaction. Because it's a uh, a related party transaction, we had to get BMO to do an independent evaluation. It's going to be a 40 page document that really rips these assets apart. And I think it's very conservative. Uh, I think it's very honest. And if you go through that, I think it clearly explains why this is a, a billion dollar company. And then as far as the presentation goes, you know, this is a this is a tight merger deck. But after Denver, once you've gone through our meetings, we're going to have a new deck that like really incorporates GCM side of the story and the Eris side of the story. And I think that's that's going to be a very uh, useful document as well. Um, in, so thanks again. In fact, if I could just add to that, Tyron, in fact, the circular will likely be uh, filed on Monday and mailing will start Monday or Tuesday. Uh, so the record date, I believe, is Monday. 
on that transaction. And the shareholder meetings are scheduled for the 19th of September.